Uh, let's give a very warm welcome to Brendan Jane Raymond. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Brendan. Um, you don't know me, but as Reverend said, eight years ago I was sitting right where you are now. I was in the class of 2009. So I know a little bit about where you're at, and I get that some of you just here because you have to be, and that's okay. But hopefully some of what I say will be interesting and you'll connect to it, and if not, I'll be playing a couple of songs as well, and hopefully you'll enjoy those. From Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to talk to you today about the issue of identity, who you are. It's something that as we grow up, we try to figure out and it can really take our whole lives to do that properly. But particularly when we're younger, we get a lot of ideas about who we are thrown at us really quickly from all those around us, from our family, our friends, ourselves. And some of those words can be really good and helpful and encouraging, but some really aren't. And they can cut to the heart of us and really affect who we are as a person. And we can believe them even when they aren't, they aren't true. And when we're younger, we don't have the experience or the frame of reference to tell if they are true or not to be able to test those. But then there are some other words, words from the Bible, words that we're told a truth. And this passage that I read before really challenged me because I particularly struggled with fear, especially when I was younger, though I still do in bits now. But this verse was saying to be strong and courageous, it's certainly not how I felt. But what I didn't realise back then is that there can be a difference between how you feel and what you do. You can feel afraid, but be strong. You can feel terrified, but be courageous. And so this song is about comparing some of the words that I tended to see and believe about myself to the words that God was speaking over me. strong and courageous but how I am scared and frightened you say do not be afraid or discouraged but how you say that you'll never leave me nor forsake me you will give me strength you will always be there to love me hold me and guide me and i know you speak the truth cause your words are the words of life and love i am lost and broken you say you will pick me up but how I am obsessed and addicted You say enjoy you more But how you say that You'll never leave me nor forsake me You will give me strength You will always be there To love me, hold me and guide me And I know you speak the truth I am a sinner You say that you love me But how I am not worthy You say that you trust me But how I am all alone you say that you see me, but how you say that you never leave me nor forsake me. You will give me strength, you will always be there to love me, hold me, and guide me. And I know you speak the truth, cause your words are the words of life. And, love. and you are life given freely for me, and you are love, you died on the cross for me, and you are light 
Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? I mentioned before that some words that people say, or even that we say to ourselves, can really affect who we are as a person. It can start to define us, become core beliefs that we have about ourselves. And often they aren't things that we think about too much. They, we just accept them as a given. And it can often be really negative. <coughs> For the longest time, and particularly when I was in high school, there were two negative core beliefs that I had about myself. The first was that I was unseen, unnoticed, and unneeded. And the second is that I was unloved, unwanted, and uncared for. And these permeated who I was. These were poisonous and ate me up from the inside out. And they affected everything that I did and said and thought. And it took me so long to realise that I actually had these about myself. But as soon as I did, I knew that I needed to get rid of them. That they were killing me. But the thing is, whenever you're trying to get rid of a wrong or unhealthy or a bad belief, it's not enough to just remove it. Because then it leaves an empty space and space of holes a vacuum. So it's too easy to go back or fall into something else that's bad or worse. Instead, we need to replace it intentionally with something that is good and better and true. We need to name what's wrong. We need to shake it and get rid of it and replace it with something better. And when we do that, we can suddenly start to live lives that are a lot more free because we're not living under those lies anymore. Just a speck on the horizon Just another dot in that blonde line A shadow, nobody, and I don't matter I am already the invisible I know. 
Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit then. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for, will go freely in and out and find pasture. A thief is only there to steal and to kill and destroy. I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. So the question is, if we don't define ourselves by what the people around us say, if we go that that's, that can be unreliable, then how do we define ourselves? How do we know who we are, what our identity is? We look to our Father and what He has said. We look to who He is because we are made in His image. And so the more we understand who God is, the more we understand who we are. And what I really want to focus on right now is that God is life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the bread of life. These were the words of Jesus. When he came to earth and talked to people, one of the things that he loved to talk about was a new life that people could have. And he wasn't talking about life in some far-flung, distant, maybe future, somewhere over there. He was talking about a life for right here and right now. And like I read a moment ago, a real and eternal life, more and better life than you could ever dream of. That's the life that Jesus wants you to have. That's the life that Jesus was talking about. And when you look at the word for life that Jesus actually used, going back to the original Greek, because I'm a bit of a nerd like that, it's actually a verb. Because it's not just something that exists or kind of sits there. It's an action. It's a doing. It's living. Part of who we are, part of our identity, is that we are made to be alive, living, moving, breathing, active, growing people. Not just stationary, but active. If something is not moving and growing, it is not alive. And it is the same with us. If we are not spiritually growing and moving, then we are not alive. God's gift of abundant life is something that is offered to each one of you freely. Are you living life to the full? Can't walk to cry at the sand 
you or anything, but I hope that some of what I've said or played or sung has resonated with you, connected with you, and I pray that you'll remember to be aware of the words that are spoken into your life to challenge false negative beliefs that you have about yourself, and remember that you were made to be alive and living. Thank you.